Awesome. Awesome. We're going to give it just a minute or two for everyone to hop on. Uh, if you're driving, probably should probably should not be driving at the moment because I'm going to show you guys the top 10 books of 2022. These are books that I read this year. They didn't come out in 2022. They didn't come out this year. Uh, a couple of them did, but a lot of them did not. These are just my favorites, my top 10 that I read this year. Um, I actually read more than 10 John Maxwell books <laughs> uh, alone. So, um, but there's everything in here from business to personal development, to leadership, to, you know, other stuff. So shiny forehead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so anyway, I just woke up uh, I know, I know seven may not like it, but I got my breakfast on deck. That's why I'm running a little bit late today, but it's all gravy. All right. If you guys have questions, you're free to ask. Uh, I'm also going to post this on YouTube a little bit later. And if you're watching this on YouTube, all of the books will be in the description. All right. So low battery yikes yikes low battery all right so at number 10 all right number 10 is going to be do hard things by steve magnus okay and i know it might the camera might be reversed it is what it is um but there it is do hard things by steve magnus so one of the biggest take uh takeaways from this one is that we get you know, signals sent to us, right? Uh, in the form of emotion. So our emotions are, you know, our, our subconscious is trying to tell us something, right? And it's our job to interpret what that means. And then basically take that and then respond accordingly. You know what I mean? So that was like the biggest takeaway. Obviously, it's a whole book. It's got a lot more in, in it than that but that's why i recommended it um and obviously it goes into other things too it starts off talking about how the traditional sense of toughness right what real toughness is um is actually not toughness at all so he kind of corrects um that in a sense so there's a lot of gems in there that's my biggest takeaway and that comes in at number 10 do hard things by steve magnus all right I don't know. Let me put this on the floor, I guess. Um, at number nine is going to be Earl Nightingale. Your success starts here. Okay. Your success starts here. I have many books by Earl Nightingale. Um, an official, I think it's um, like the Nightingale Conant publication is, is who it is, but it's, it's a lot of the work from Earl Nightingale. So um, it's short, you know, it's, it's not complicated. They're easy reads and they're great for your mindset. And I think everyone, uh, should never just focus on one subject. I see a lot of you guys wave and I want to wave back, but I'm, I'm trying to do this, <laughs> but uh, I see, I see you all coming in, but you know, someone shouldn't just study one subject. You know, there, there should be multiple subjects studied. So at least for the mindset, I mean, it's a very thin book. It's not difficult, very easy, but very powerful information. And if you know Earl Nightingale's work, then, you know, enough said. All right. Number eight, this is one I had on my bookshelf for a long time. I had to wipe the dust off of it. I kept looking at it and I kept saying, Man, I got to read that book one day, bro, and just, you know, stop buying new books and just go ahead and read this one. So I finally did it this year, and it's a it's an old one, but it's not bad. It's called Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. Okay, T. Harv Ecker. So these are basically affirmations um, or declarations, I should say, about money, uh, having the proper money mindset. So although like a lot of the things in here i kind of already had but this just kind of furthered my understanding about the 
money mindset and a few other things as well i like the stories in here and i definitely got some more takeaways so i definitely did grow and elevate from from this one um it's super old the website in here doesn't even work anymore i typed it in it's it's not even there so it, it's it's old but it's really good it's uh it's small okay relatively thin and it's pretty good so i got a lot of notes out of that and that comes in at number seven or excuse me that was uh number eight number seven is going to be john maxwell's good leaders ask great questions okay good leaders ask great questions one of the no uh most annoying things about the military is when i joined people bombarded me with questions where are you from you know all this and that and i always was really annoyed about how many questions people asked but after reading this book i finally understand why they did those things so it's interesting because when when you hear the title good leaders ask great questions you automatically think a leader just asking someone something but that's actually not the case so the fir the first chapter it goes over what a leader asks themselves right and then i think the second chapter is on what leaders ask their team and stuff like that so it's very insightful um when i took notes on this book this was the out of out of all the books that i read this year notes from this one ended up being the longest you know i ended up being i think it was like 20 pages of notes or 18 pages of notes and most of the time the notes that i have are anywhere from three to six pages so um yeah it's good and i think it's a great way to communicate with people and to connect with people um it's also a way of engaging with people asking them questions and stuff like that so I do that on go live. It's why I do that, you know, to, to not only interact with students, but to get feedback and stuff like that. So, you know, I, that's why I do these things. So one more time at number seven, good leaders ask great questions by John Maxwell. All right. Number six, a uh, really, really good one. I knew about this one for a long time. I never bought it until earlier this year. But at number six, we are going to have Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This is one I've been recommending to a few different people. There was a, a stream I did. It was a Zoom call for the German Trade House or Trade House Germany. And there was over 300 people on the call. And I remember that this was one of them as well. I just didn't tell them that this would be one of the books of the month. I don't, I don't think I told them that. But it is. Okay, it's one of... Um, the greatest books I read this year, there's so much insight into your mindset. You know, I think it was Epictetus who said, uh, it's not what happens to you. It's how you respond or how you think about what happens to you. And I, I believe Epictetus was one of Marcus Aurelius's um, mentors as well. So coming in at number six, Meditations by one of the last great Roman emperors, Marcus Aurelius. And I'll throw this in here, free of charge, okay, is uh, Gladiator, you know, the, the movie Gladiator that came out in 2000 with Russell Crowe. Watch that movie if you haven't. It's a classic, and there are some examples of stoicism within that movie. So a free movie recommendation along with the books, okay? At number five, um, there's going to be, it's going to be another one by John Maxwell told you I read 10 Maxwell books so a few of them had to make it in here and number five it's relatively short um the last one the, the number two is going to be the best one by Maxwell uh but this one is one of the shorter ones it's called the self-aware leader by John Maxwell okay the self-aware leader so I know John Maxwell has like so many books i think it's over 100 you know the dude is a legend and he sold over i think 35 million books worldwide or whatever and um but each one it does have some overlapping insight but each one still happens to be different from one another so this is just kind of one 
where again, it's, it's small, it's kind of short, you know, it's not one of those super thick books, but it still, you know, has power behind it. So if you are new to reading, if you're new to reading leadership and you don't want to pick up uh, a really intimidating book, then here you go. The Self-Aware Leader by John C. Maxwell, the goat of leadership. All right. That was number five. So coming in at number four, this was actually um, book of the month for December on channel 96 uh, on the I Am Mastery Academy. Mr. Greg McKeown, a book called Essentialism. Okay, Essentialism. So this book is basically for anyone who feels like they do a lot of work but are not getting a lot of progress, right? Uh, busy but not productive. Um, the disciplined pursuit of less, right? So let me let me actually pull out a quote here because we're getting we're getting now to the to the top top three. So um, here here's one end of a paragraph here uh, at the beginning of the book, and it goes like this. The way of the essentialist means living by design, not by default. Instead of making choices reactively, the essentialist deliberately distinguishes the vital few from the trivial many, eliminates the non-essentials, and then removes obstacles so the essential things have clear, smooth passage. In other words, essentialism is a disciplined, systematic approach for determining where our highest point of contribution lies then making execution of those things almost effortless. You know what I mean? So it's just about doing what really matters, what is truly essential. And you literally can do more by doing less. So fun fact, um, he, he talks about making things effortless. This isn't part of the list, but this is one of uh, the books that I'm reading right now. The one after essentialism is actually effortless greg mckeown continues the series i don't know if he has another one but i but i know this one is coming after essentialism is called effortless so i'm i'm not very far into this one but I, i've started it because i did like essentialism i like the way that he wrote it i like you know what was in here and so i went ahead and picked up the next one as well so this one again is not part of the list but i have it just to let you guys know all right so now we get to the top three of uh, my favorite books from 2022 at number three this one i have not shared publicly i've shared with a few friends of mine and um not that i wanted to keep it from anyone but i wanted to give this one to people who were serious about growing uh, their business or about starting a business. So if you're someone who's looking forward to 2023 and you want to start a business or maybe relaunch uh, a business, business that you already have, this one's going to be for you. All right. So I'm just going to read the back a little bit, uh, before I show you what the title is. All right. So at the top, it says, stop fighting for customers, let customers fight over you. Uh, there's a little paragraph and then there's some bullet points. So the, the bullet points are this attract customers easily instead of chasing them down, create a market of loyal fans who only want to buy from you design and implement product launch campaigns to stay oversubscribed, generate so much desire that people are willing to join a waiting list, stay popular among customers in changing times. And the last one. Harness the power of data and hyper targeting to pinpoint perfect prospects. Okay. So basically, in other words, being oversubscribed. Okay. And that's exactly what this book is called. It's called Oversubscribed by Daniel Priestley. Okay. Daniel Priestley. And even on the cover, you guys can see that basically there's this long line of people waiting to. Well, it's just a long line, but that's essentially what you want. If you're starting a business, right? Think about Apple for just a minute. Think about Apple, right? When the new iPhone comes out, this is what people do. They're lining up out the door. They're putting their tents out. These fucking people are sleeping in tents to get the new iPhone that comes out in a day or two days, right? 
that's being oversubscribed. Okay. Um, you see people do that with Jordans as well, right? Michael Jordan has thousands of shoes, you know, that, that they put out Nike, Adidas or whatever. Right. And that's what people do. They, they're lining up, um, you know, the night before. Okay. Just to take it one step further. Okay. And not that I would ever want this, but think about this. People get killed over shoes. People rob other people to get certain pairs of shoes. Okay. And again, not that I would want to condone that. I'm not trying to talk shit about Michael Jordan, but that's some powerful business, dude. You know what I'm saying? That's being oversubscribed. And this book will teach you how to do that. Okay. Um, I've implemented some things this year that I got from this very book, right? Having a um, mentorship application process. Not everybody joins my business, right? Um, I stopped taking students, right? No one can just join my mentorship. That's, that's not how it works. But this is what it can do, okay? Oversubscribe. So I hope yeah, I sold you on that because I'm telling you that's a good one. All right. So at number two, at number two, and this is the third John Maxwell book. Okay. I know John Maxwell came in, you know, three spots out of 10 and it is what it is. But although a leadership book, I think the one of the biggest takeaways from this one is not leading people, but it's more connecting with people. So this one was recommended to me by Gustavo, actually a uh, great guy, you know, uh, chairman 50, I think in uh, the I master Academy, right? I've had many conversations with the guy, super smart, super talented. One of the most, if not the most harding or <laughs> harding hardest working individuals uh, that I know of in the Academy. He recommended uh, to me this book, he said that it changed his life. And so I picked it up, I uh, believed him and I read it. And honestly, I can see why. All right. So that book is called everyone communicates few connect by John Maxwell. Everyone communicates few connect by John Maxwell. So we, at, at the end of the day, we basically connect with people four different ways, you know, intellectually, emotionally, um, I forgot the other two because I'm a little bit nervous because I'm live. But in other words, it's not about giving people, you know, just one of the connections, right? You don't just want people to know that you're smart or you don't want um, people to know that that you care about them, right? You want a combination of, of all those things that you're smart, that you care and, you know, you know what you're talking about and that you want the best for people, you know, so I'll, I'll post it up here again is uh the the name cut out it's everyone communicates few connect by john maxwell okay this book comes in at number two uh on my list all right so it's a little bit taller than than the other ones like um if i showed you if i compared uh the self-aware leader to this other one you see how the self-aware is, is smaller and everyone communicates few connect is a little bit bigger so um, yeah, it's got a lot more information on here. Lots of uh, great examples, but plenty of insight, dude. I'm telling you, if you are a person that is a manager or a business owner, um, I would say probably P600 or higher, um, within the I am master Academy, this book is for you. Gustavo said it changed his life. I think it changed mine and I think it will also change yours. All right. The last one at number one, okay, this is our last one. Number one, it came out, um, I think it was two months ago. There was a waiting period, I think of like two, maybe even three months. Um, I had to wait for it. I pre-ordered it. It came in. One of my favorite authors um, of this year and even of last year is Ryan Holiday. So Stillness is the Key was probably the greatest book recommendation that I've ever given just based on the feedback from students, um, which is great. Uh, I, I like getting feedback. I like, you know, when people tell me that this one is their favorite or whatever the case. So he actually came out with another one earlier this year. If you don't know what it is, hopefully you already have it. 
But if you don't know what it is, it's called Discipline is Destiny, okay, by Ryan Holiday. Discipline is Destiny. I pretty much have all of his work. Um, I would consider him probably a modern day Stoic, so like a modern day Seneca or a modern day, I wouldn't say Marcus Aurelius because the position would be different, but you know, the guy's super smart. He studies philosophy, studies Stoicism, uh, amongst other things. The guy reads probably what I read in a year, in like a month, you know, um, great guy. I just finished yesterday. I watched uh, his podcast with Joe Rogan. So lots of insight on that one as well. He gives out book recommendations Too too many for me to keep up with, but um, he came out with this one. Okay. Discipline is destiny by Ryan Holiday. Okay. It's small but it's it's powerful and it's just incredible all right so that will do it i'll, I'll go over this I'll, I'll go over the list one more time um but again if you're watching this on youtube the the uh links and, and the list will be in the description but number 10 is do hard things by steve magnus number nine is your success starts here by earl nightingale Number eight is Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. Number seven is Good Leaders Ask Great Questions by John Maxwell. Number six is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Number five is The Self-Aware Leader by John Maxwell. Number four is Essentialism by Greg, Greg McKeown. Number three is Oversubscribed by Daniel Priestley. Number two is Everyone Communicates Few Connect by John Maxwell. And number one, again, Discipline is Destiny by Ryan Holiday. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, there was a couple of questions I got in here. I uh, wanted to make sure I went over those before we shut it down. How much do you read a day? So number one, I don't read every single day. I know that's a shock to some people, but, you know, I think some people have really, really high expectations of, of me because I share books all the time, but that doesn't mean I read every day. I try to get, I would say, anywhere from 30 minutes uh, to an hour um, on average. Sometimes it's more if I decide to leave the house. Um, I made a Twitter post about this uh, maybe a week or two ago, and I talked about how I'm able to read more. Um, I'll leave. I'll go somewhere else. I'll put on noise-canceling headphones with low music, and I will just dig into a book. So on those days, I'll read way more, uh, but some days I don't read at all. And uh, as, as per usual, when it comes to books, I tell you guys that you don't want to read for speed. You want to read for comprehension, right? Don't just read to say, oh, I read a book. No, read to get some insight. And then above everything else, use that insight, actually go and apply what you've learned in your life, into your business, uh, into your marriage, whatever the case might be. Okay, take action. Don't just read just to read. You know what I'm saying? So um there it is but i don't i don't think let me see tell me about your trading sir about psychology um when it comes to trading psychology obviously i can i can teach and i can do these things but i would never not recommend trading in the zone and disciplined trader by mark douglas okay that's the goat i would never you know try to be better than he was um well i tried to but i i will never admit that i would be better uh, than Mark Douglas in, in the psychology aspect of it. So, um, again, I could teach you things, but I think you'd be much better off by number one, actually trading, not financial advice though, but by reading and applying, uh, Mark Douglas, uh, his work, okay. Trading in his own disciplined trader. All right. And I, I think that's about it. I think that is about it. So, um, someone asked about gold. I haven't even looked at the charts today. I literally woke up like an hour ago. That's why I'm a little bit late. It is what it is. I, I did a lot of work. Yes. I woke up early yesterday. I did a lot of things. I even, I even worked out a lot. So I think my body was just too tired. You know what I mean? Just finished your trading book and it was awesome. Simon, if you're still here, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's not a healthy breakfast. It's not, but you know, we all have our vices. We all have things that we do that we shouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? Thomas says, so you take notes while reading. What do you do with the notes? You read them again after every book, after every month. What is your rule about that? So great question. I'm glad you asked. 
Um, dude, every time... Oh, here it is. Okay. I was going to say, every time I do this, I never have it. Let me show you guys this. Okay. This isn't, this isn't all of them, but these are my notes. Okay. So what I do, for example... I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna just take one off the top. Oh, matter of fact, everyone communicates, few connect. Look at that. Okay, so these are my notes. These are condensed versions of the book, right? So like, here's here's the book. Everyone communicates, few connect, and then like, here's the notes. It's a small packet of maybe five or six pages of the main points of quotes. Uh, sometimes I'll even throw in ideas about business or whatever that I may have. I may I may put that in here too. Okay, so what I do, number one, is I'll highlight in the book, um, I'll write things down. Now, after I'm done with the book, I'll take those notes, uh, I'll take the highlights, and then I'll, I'll put them into a Word document. And that's why we can, we can sum up these books in maybe five or six pages. So we, we cut out basically the stories, um, I don't want to say fluff, but you know, a lot of the stuff that you don't need to read you know i've read the book already i wrote down the main points and so i go over those main points um just every once in a while i, I don't want to say every day that's pretty unnecessary but maybe at least once a week at least two to three times a month i skim through these you know leadership um i have good leaders ask great questions i even have one on discipline is destiny right so all, all of these things Leadership, 17 Indisputable Laws of Teamwork, uh, Becoming a Person of Influence. That was one of the first notes that I ever took uh, from, from John Maxwell. I even have Mark Douglas's YouTube series, uh, How to Think Like a Professional Trader and uh, Self-Aware Leader, and even Do Hard Things by Steve Magnus. So I got all this shit, dude. I'm telling you, all of them, okay? All of these things, right? So... I'm not going to go back and, I mean, I could go back and reread the books. You could do that, but am I going to reread every single book? I mean, come on, that's, that's not going to happen, but main points, great ideas, the biggest takeaways. Okay. But, and here's the thing too. Okay. Here's the thing too. Don't ask for these. You're not getting these. You got to go read yourself. You got to take your own notes. Okay. Plus that would be huge copyright infringement. We don't want to do that, do we? No, no, no. Okay, best gift for traders. Every year we do a um, a tr uh, trader's Christmas wish list. Um, I think I still might put that together. We haven't done that yet, but we'll see. So just make sure to watch my stories and uh, you know keep up with that. And we'll see about doing that again this year. Okay. What's the difference between smart money and retailers? Um, smart money is smart money. They're the ones who basically control everything. They're the puppet masters and retail traders is basically everyone else. People like you and I. So we are retail traders, but we don't trade like retail traders. We're retail traders who like to trade like smart money or get in alignment with smart money. Okay. Oh, that's the shortest and simplest version that, that you're going to get. And we'll probably keep rolling until the battery dies. Because again, I just woke up and didn't charge my phone. So you can, you can tell how my Monday is going. But I'm, I'm going to trade today anyway. How important is life besides the charts for you? Is December a month where you focus more on the family and come down? Or are you always doing something that has to do with trading? No, I don't. Trading is, well, trading is life. But it's not everything, dude. It's not everything. There's so much more to life than money. Um, trading and money probably won't even come in my top three or top five. You know, it's what I'm known for. It's what I do every single day, but that's not what's important. You know, so great question. But, you know, it, life is about uh, family. You know, it's about impact. It's about changing the world in a positive way, doing what you love. Um, you know, and, and not to sound cliche, but you know, following your destiny or whatever. So, um, so much more to life than, than, uh, trading. You know what I'm saying? Watching your girl up right now. You're distracting me. Hey, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Uh, someone already asked about the notes. No, I already told you. Uh, see, I see you laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I knew someone was going to ask guys. I already know. I already know. You know, we do things and I can already tell, yeah, someone's going to want these notes. I, I get it. 
I get it. That's that's hilarious. Though I just got to that. All right. Uh, for someone who's made a lot of sacrifices to make their lives better and trying to implement what they learn from here, booms but failing. What do you recommend? Is there a book or something you can recommend? So I'm I'm not entirely sure what exactly the the question is there, but um. It, I guess if there's one thing I had to say is that success is not a straight line. Okay. It's, it's an up and down. It's like a chart. You know, you look at a price chart, that's success. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be struggles. And that's why we talk about things like discipline. It's why we talk about things like stillness. Um, obstacles is the way courage is calling, you know, all these things, because it, it, I can only teach you so much. There's, there's only number one. There's only so much that I know. Number two, out of what I know, there's only so many things that I can explain in a way that you guys are going to be able to get it. That's why I tell you guys that you should never have just one single mentor. Th that's a terrible idea. That's one of the worst ideas I've ever heard of. Okay, you have to have multiple, um, you know, mentors or 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 multiple, you know, uh, avenues for learning and experiencing things. So. You know, the obstacle is the way, you know, you just got to move past them and you got to learn from them to move forward with uh, new profound wisdom and experience. You know what I mean? Books are going to teach you things, but um, number one, there's no greater teacher than the market. And number two, there's no greater teacher than life. You know what I mean? Life lessons are going to come through life. Trading lessons are going to come through actually trading, you know, so do what you want with that information. What's your current figure? Uh, what does that even mean, bro? <laughs> what does that even mean? I'm five six. No, I'm five eight. Um, one hundred and eighty two pounds. So, I guess I don't know. Uh, throughout your trading journey, how long did it take you to become uh, profitable in trading? Well, ooh. Sorry, sorry. I am on 10%. I'm on 10%. Just for you guys. I'm out here killing my phone just for you guys. Um, my I don't want to sound like an asshole, but my first trade was profitable. Okay. My first ever trade was profitable. But I ended up losing the majority of that over the next, I don't know, year and some change or whatever it was. And then I got into stocks and um stocks was was easy from the get-go because I started trading during a bull market. So almost anything that we bought. <laughs> Excuse me. Almost anything that we bought was going up. So now Forex was different. Okay. Forex was different, but I really couldn't tell you how long that it took me. I never wrote that down. Okay. What you guys got to understand too, is that I never aspired to be what I am today, like six, seven years ago. Okay. I never told myself, yeah, I'm going to be on the internet telling people I've never met about books and trading and life and all these things. And that was, you know, that was just completely, I never even thought about things like that. So I never thought about documenting my journey in that type of manner. Oh, it took me 172 days to become profitable and stuff like that. I, I never, you know what I mean? That was never the goal. Okay. So the last thing I'll leave you with the last little, I guess, gem, if you want to, is that you should not focus on the outcome. You shouldn't focus on final outcomes. You should focus on the process that's going to get you there. You know what I'm saying? So don't focus on, you know, let's say um, uh, hitting top 10 on FTMO. Like, oh, my goal is hit top 10 on FTMO. Okay that's a great goal, you know, and I, my friends have hit top 10. My, I have a friend who hit number one recently on FTMO. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that, and, and I know him, I talk to him all the time. I know he doesn't text me going, I'm going to hit number one, John. I'm going to hit top 10, John. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. He doesn't even mention his goals to me. He doesn't do any of that, but you know what he does is he focuses on the process he marks up charts. He talks about execution. He talks about managing trades and all these things and all the intricate details, right? The process that's going to get him there. He never mentions his goals to me. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same. Well, I tell you guys goals that I have, but 
you know that on my channel and even in my book and, and even as of right now, we're going over details. We're not going over final results. You know what I'm saying? So that is what I'm going to leave you guys with. Very inspiring. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. What was the greatest thing in life uh, taught you and what did you take away from it that you can give to us? Okay, that'll be the last one for today. Um, what was the greatest thing life taught you? What did you take away from it? Uh, well, my next book is pretty much about that, to be honest. Um, there are many, many lessons about life. I think one of the greatest lessons is um, I'd probably have to say forgiveness because I held grudges against people that did very wrong things to me. And I thought that being more successful and sitting on people would bring, you know, happiness or contentment. And I've done both of those things. And although it felt great in the moment, it did not bring, you know, happiness, contentment or, or anything like that. Um, and that's why I changed my ways. I, I stopped shitting on people. Unless you're just a douchebag, then I'll have to, you know, finesse that. But 99 times out of 100, it's just when you hold, yeah, you got to forgive people. When you hold on to things, it's, it's going to mess you up. It's going to mess up your performance. When you're worried about, well, I got to take a good trade so I can show my ex coworkers, you know, what they're missing out on. I don't care about none of that, bro. I don't care about none of that. And if anything, they know. They know. They have me on Facebook. They follow me on Instagram. They know I haven't had a job since, what, 2019? Early 2019? They know. They know I'm at home all day, every day. I don't need to come out here and, and, and you know, scream that to the world. When people are curious, they're going to find out. So, I just leave them to that. And I focus on shit like telling you guys, you know, what books I'm reading and, and all that. So biggest thing is, is forgiveness. You, you can't hold things in. You got to let things go. You know, forgive other people like you have been forgiven. Right? Amen. Amen. All right. So y'all be blessed. I hope you guys had a good time. Again, the links will be in the description. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, leave me a comment. I lied. Comments are turned off. But like, subscribe, share it with a friend if you found this to be valuable. And I will see you guys in the next one.